um, if you could tell me what your sweet spot is and in what kind of businesses you like to invest. Well, I am always looking for somebody who is willing to uh, break the standards, break the mores. Mm. Uh, if, if an entrepreneur comes to me with something that looks a lot like another business that I've seen before, I'm a lot less interesting than if it's something that is an enormous leap Right. from where the old uh, the standard is. So um, so I'm looking for really unique individuals. They have to um, have be willing to be to have ideas that are unpopular um, and to stand up for those ideas and mm -hmm. drive them. Mm -hmm. uh, when an entrepreneur's ideas are too popular, uh, we might fund them by mistake. Yes. And uh, because we think, oh, we want to get caught up in this, but we usually lose our money in this. Interesting. Um, I was interviewing a, a male entrepreneur the other day. He said that a lot of VCs go to, for the hot table at, at the um, in the gambling stakes uh, rather than trying something new. And I guess what I'm hearing from you is that you're really interested in disruptive um, businesses. Yeah, I've, I've always been more successful in trying something where where others fear to tread. Isn't that great? You're yeah. a real adventurer. <laughs> uh, what percentage of women startups do you get pitches for and what percentage have you funded? I know you've been extremely supportive of Astia. Sure. Um, well, we've funded a lot of women uh, entrepreneurs, a disproportionate share because the wow. ones who start businesses are somewhat unique on their own. Mm. Um, We've had mixed results, but uh, we have uh, we have had good success where a woman is a part of the entrepreneurial team, and that has often worked out quite well. Uh, so it's um, it's a mix. It's a mixed mm -hmm. bag. Mm -hmm. And uh, what percent? I'd say um, I'd say about a third to a half of all entrepreneurs have a woman on the team somewhere and uh, you know one of the first five people and uh, and then I'd say we fund um, the ones who are just women like one woman entrepreneur those are rare those are uh, one out of 20 that come in our door okay. and then uh, we fund we did fund a disproportionate share of women because I was aggressively trying to um, push it and promote it. Um, now I feel like you know it's it's starting to catch, and uh, and so we're we probably fund about a, a proportionate share. Fantastic, and I'm hearing too in the background that diversity on teams is obviously a winner for, that you've noticed because you yeah, were saying yeah, I, I think that has a, I think that makes a big difference. Fantastic, yeah. that's so great, great feedback. Have you noted differences with women entrepreneurs in how they pitch and build businesses? <laughs> um, yes, there is quite a quite a difference mm -hmm. in how they pitch and build businesses. Um, the uh, uh, I'll, I'll go into how they build businesses, how they pitch, yes. there's sort of some obvious things that are different. But um, how they build businesses, um, women are very uh, tight with money and they're good with money. And that has, been a, that has been a real positive for some of the women entrepreneurs that we funded. Okay. Um, the, the negatives are that, that uh, women uh, some women entrepreneurs uh, might not be thinking big enough, and we, I would encourage women to, who are entrepreneurs to think very big, and, um, and, and uh, also women entrepreneurs who become successful often are happy to sort of sell their businesses, uh, rather than, if they wanted to leave their business, rather than hiring somebody in, to run it from there and continue to grow it. Mm. Uh, that has been, uh, that's a very much a generality and yes, probably I not understand. completely fair in either case. But um, but I have noticed they're very good and tight with money. Okay, <laughs> a big plus. Mm -hmm. uh, I re recently interviewed Cindy Gallup of If We Ran The World uh, in New York where she said so many, many people are realizing that as Paco Underhill said recently to Ad Age, if you want business success, then you have to find mass acceptance with women. 
Uh, more and more people are realising what a powerful economic force women are as purchasers. Also, the, thing, the things that women bring to the table in terms of business and different approaches and perspectives on business are increasingly valuable and increasingly valued. Do you think that within the VC community that the awareness of these opportunities through women, both as purchasers and founders, is there? And how can we enlighten the VC community about this opportunity? Because obviously <coughs> you're in the vanguard of that. Well, we, uh, we, had, um, we had two women partners and now we have one, two, one left us. Um, the, uh, and so we do believe that the women are, and, and we believe that the women partners are really good, have a really good perspective on business. Right. Um, and particularly in venture capital where intuition is very important, uh, mm. it turns out that our woman, Jennifer Fonstadt, is, is quite intuitive and she can spot things that the, the six men around the table can't spot. So that is, that's a great thing. Um, I, we're all aware that women drive much of the shopping out there and that they are, they know what they like, they know what might be good businesses and uh, I think that's, uh, that's a terrific help mm. um, to, uh, to a venture capitalist to judge, for judging businesses. But um, it's also a good perspective to an entrepreneur who's trying to uh, sell to that market. Hmm. And do you think on a wider level outside your firm that, um, that this, this awareness exists? Because obviously you've got it <coughs> and being in the bank. Sure, yeah. we're, 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 in, we're interested, we keep tracking it, but yeah, there are more and more women in the venture capital business. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's interesting is there are a lot of women who are in the fund of funds business. A lot of women fund our, our venture fund. Okay. And then we put that to work with um, okay. entrepreneurs. Huh. Uh, we, a disproportionate share of women are um, run fund of funds and that kind That's of thing. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they've moved up one one more layer of abstraction. Yes. Yeah. More of them than there are percentage than there are venture capital women, mm -hmm. and more venture capital women than there are women entrepreneurs. Would you know why that is? Do you think? Um, I don't know mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I could project. You think those are safer. Areas, those but... are safer jobs. The right. ones higher uh, higher up on the food chain are safer okay. jobs. Okay. Um, but what we're all trying to do here is to encourage more entrepreneurial women. So yeah. that's the, the goal there. Then I think is to move move down to the risk-taking yes. part of the food chain. And uh, I've been <coughs> told by uh, a lot of VCs that, you know, obviously women entrepreneurs have to um, get funding and then sell their businesses and then often they become venture capitalists. So uh, I'm wondering, it's just a question, maybe there's too many obstacles um, to have high numbers there just yet. I mean, obviously that's changing, but maybe... Well, we've been funding women for a long time. Yeah. I, uh, um, the You're so first, distinctive. The Fantastic. first woman entrepreneur <laughs> we funded uh, was probably in 1986. Wow! So you we've, guys are brilliant. That's so we've fantastic. been funding women for a long time. So we do have a pretty good sample. We, yeah. we, we do have a f good flavor. Probably 20 to 40 female entrepreneurs, leader female entrepreneurs, where wow. they were the leader. Wow. Um, but there are probably hundreds that we funded where there was a woman in the um, part team. of the founding team. That's incredible. What would you see then as the obstacles for inclusion of more women entrepreneurs in achieving funding? Because you've had incredible experience, more than anyone else I've spoken to. Well, I think um, it's all success breeds success. Yes. So women entrepreneurs who become very successful can be models that venture capitalists will follow. Uh, I've noticed that when I try something new, um, the other venture capitalists don't follow until they've seen success on the other end. And maybe it's not just one success, but two or three, and then they'll all come in. So like we were way early in China. We funded a few companies in China yes. and a few in Europe. Well, most of the rest of the venture community was still here in the Silicon Valley. Yes. 
And when the one in Europe, when Skype took off, they took notice, but it didn't make them want to go to Europe. Yes. Uh, but then when Baidu went public in China, they all started to expand out. Right. And so they needed, a, they needed not just one, but two really interesting models for success. So uh, with women, I think it's just a matter of if there are enough models for success, if yeah. women drive big billion dollar companies, yeah. then you know, they are started by, through the entrepreneurial process, yes. uh, then you know, the venture capitalists will take notice whether the venture capitalist is a man or a woman. So it's all about breaking this ground, and you guys obviously have been doing that with your um, uh, companies that you've funded. Um, and so the more that that ground gets broken, the more level the playing field gets. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>